Okay. This is a long time coming. I've held this off for too long. Let's try and get this over with as quickly as possible, even though there's a lot to talk about, so that's not really true. We'll Honestly, let's just try and bang out the Honorable Mansions. Hey guys, this is my video talking about what I believe to be the five best episodes of Supernatural Season 4. Admittedly, I actually held this off until literally the day before I released the season review. I've actually been holding off on this for a while, mainly because there's so much to talk about. I feel I might get something wrong, but I've looked over the list. I've looked over it several times. This is what I believe are the best. But before we get to the best, we gotta get to the honorable mentions, so let's bang these out as quickly as possible. Yellow Fever. This is a really funny episode. It's got some of the best jokes that Dean ever came up with. While the concept's a little bit weird and the monster itself maybe it might not be really as realistic in terms of keeping to the lore of everything, it's still a really goddamn funny episode. It's the Great Pumpkin, Sam Winchester. I actually really love this episode for the Sam Hain or uh, Samin, Sam Hain or something. I, I know that they mispronounce it, but I like the aspect of it using Halloween as a crux, as well as just it being a seal episode, kind of really building into the whole idea that Supernatural was building towards a bigger end. And this is one of those first big episodes that take that leap. Sevens that would follow afterwards were because of this episode, because of what it established and what it kind of gave precedence and set a standard for for big heavy story especially seal breaking episodes of the season i know what you did last summer this one introduces anna who i thought was such a great addition to the show i liked how she really kind of brought her own element into the show and while they would sort of meld her characters uh, her character and her characteristics into castiel i liked her inclusion in the story i liked the idea of a, an angel choosing to fall and I love how this was a great preseason finale, well, leading up to the preseason finale. It was just a lot of really good two-parter episodes, three-parter episodes in some cases, but this was such a great story-filled episode. Heaven in Hell, this is the follow-up to I Know What You Did Last Summer. Really cool fights, really cool battles in this episode. I liked how Anna really got to show off her power. There was a fight between angels and demons in this episode it was really cool to see how that all turned out just had a lot of fun with this episode mid-season finales were always a really good thing for the show um, even when they didn't really seem to happen but this is one of those really really good ones if anything one of probably the better mid-season finales of the show's history in the beginning now i actually i gave this episode a seven out of seven but it's not in the top five mainly because it is a cool story episode. I love the aspect of it. I love the idea of Dean going back in time and meeting his grandfather, meeting his father, meeting his mother. I think that's all really, really cool. But in terms of overall scope towards the season, it's a cool look back. It's a cool uh, use of Castiel and the means of the abilities that he has. But it's kind of just a go back in time. This is what's going to happen. Nothing's going to change. Doesn't matter episode. There are more that would do this better in the latter seasons especially season five for those of you know what i'm talking about except instead of going back in time it's going forward in time but i like what this episode brought to the table in terms of kind of doing alternate worlds because this is an aspect that would obviously be taken to the nth degree in the latter seasons and then finally jump the shark this is an episode that starts off kind of bad but then it goes really good and it has this cool aspect of what would happen if the brothers met their half brother Obviously, it's not actually him, but they find out this alternate aspect of their father. They find out that he actually had an additional family. And I just love the dynamic. We're seeing that Sam wants to train him as their dad did, whereas Dean's like, hell no, keep this kid out of it. And I like that opposite. I like the, the change of of perspectives in this episode considering the brother's history all right so those are the honorable mentions i'll try to get those through as fast as possible because now i gotta talk about oh god i gotta talk about the five best and uh, trust me this was a hard one starting with number five death takes a holiday this is a really cool episode i love the idea that death would just take a break and it's because the demons specifically alistair are trying to break a seal and by doing that they need to kill reapers and i really love this concept not only in terms of how the brothers find a means to get into the reaper world to then try and thwart alistair and then even being caught in the traps that they themselves put ghosts in to trap them 
but just the whole scope of it. I thought it was really cool that they were able to get this whole town full of dead people. There's a shot where you just see all the Reapers just kind of standing around. That's one of my favorite shots of Supernatural. I liked it all, and also this was the episode that introduced Alistair. Chinny chinny chin chin Alistair. I thought it was really, really good, and it's one of the best two-parters in this because Head on a Pin follows it, and Head on a Pin is even better than this one. This one's already a freaking 7 out of 7, so there's one of the several reasons why I love Death Takes a Holiday. Number 4 is When the Levee Breaks. This is the preseason finale for Season 4, and it has so much goddamn good build-up. There is so much great tension, there's so much great fear, specifically with Sam. Sam going through his withdrawal and seeing all these alternate horrible visions of people that he knows and all these people telling him the truth that he believes himself and also kind of the insinuations of what he's felt from other people but it all is just self-reflecting and it's a really good look at addiction and it's a really good look at the the harm that one will do to oneself even when there are those who are trying to help and it's just really great it's such a cool concept the idea of fighting off an addiction going cold turkey in the in the, the, in the bunker I just thought it was really, really cool. And this also is the episode that sees the angels kind of start to show their true colors. They already were, but this is the one where Castiel lets Sam go, right? And then the brothers have that fight in that hotel room, whereas they're trying to point out that they're both trying to do the right thing, but they're obviously going about it in completely different ways. But it, it combats with what each other wants. And in the end, they have that fight scene, and then there's that line that Dean says to Sam, like, if you walk out the door, don't you ever come back. That's exactly what his father said to Sam all those years ago. And it, there's a lot of really good lore, a lot of good history in this episode between the two brothers about their father, about the relationship between the two. And it's really well shot. And I love how it leaves you hanging for the season finale, even though the season finale is gonna even leave you even more hanging. So that's why it's number four. Number three is Head on a Pin. This actually, technically speaking, is personally my favorite episode because I love that evil Alistair is being tortured by, by Dean and it's a complete opposite. It's a great reflection on Dean going to hell, which was such a well brought up bit of season four. Every time I watch season four, I, I know that Dean talks about hell. I know he talks about what happened to him as we slowly go through the episodes, but it's always so refreshing to see again. And Head on a Pin is essentially the crux, the build up towards it, because we've been hearing, hearing about all these things that he did in hell, but we didn't really know what he did. And seeing him enact these tortures on Alistair for the purpose of angels is so great because we know that this isn't what Dean wants. And whereas Sam is trying to figure out a way to help Dean because he knows he says Dean can't do it but I can that affirmativeness that he says is so convincing so damning so like whoa to the audience as like we're like holy crap like Sam's really taking charge here because we've always seen Dean be the person in charge and Sam just not even consulting his brother just going straight about like I gotta get this done so I can help Dean the torture aspects really great the tension the shots in this episode are all really well done Everything about this episode is so damn good. I enjoy it. I love the character of Alistair. This was the best introduction of this character. Um, well, we already had him in uh, Death Takes a Holiday, but he's just so menacing in this episode. Apparently him and Dean, or him and Jensen Ackles, really got physical in turn, but like friendly with each other, but like actually being held up, there's a lot of trust between the two actors to really sell the danger of the scene and I love that they went to that level to do so. Now number two, number two and number one were such a huge, huge uh, combative battle for myself, mainly because of the aspects that kind of surround the two. But number two is Lucifer Rising, the season finale of the season. Such a goddamn good season finale. Really speaking, it's probably one of the best season finales that the show ever had we have the brothers at complete opposites we have them against each other pretty much and they're all rushing they're both rushing to the same thing but for two different reasons sam wants to kill lilith to supposedly save the world whereas dean is trying to stop him from killing lilith because he knows that by killing lilith that releases the last seal and thus 
lets Lucifer walk the earth, but neither know each other's intentions. And while they're trying so hard to do what they think is the right thing, they're both injuring and combating themselves. And Kripke does a fantastic job of trying to emulate uh, Kim Manners' directing style in this episode. The whole bit where they come and find Lilith in the church and there's the heartbeat and the editing and the quick cuts and just the great camera angles So that whole bit. The, the, the amount of heart rate pressure that you're going through in that scene is immense. You're absolutely on at wit's end to see how this turns out. You're wanting Sam to kill Lilith, but at the same time you don't want him to, and you want uh, Dean to try and save him, but you know it's not gonna happen, but it's kind of one of those Romeo and Juliet situations where you hope that a different ending or a different outcome occurs, even though you know it won't happen. Anakin going dark side in, in episode three is always a really good example for me as well. And then after Lilith is killed and there's just that great fade to white and we were left hanging all throughout that summer just such a good season finale it's honestly aside from swan song i think this is probably the best season finale the show ever had that's why it's number two because number one number one is the best season opener the show ever had lazarus rising everyone talks about this episode in terms of oh, season openers and there's good reason to it it's the last really, really, really good episode that Kim Manners directed. Kim Matt always brought his A game, even when his health was fallen, failing in, in episodes like Metamorphosis, but he just brings all of his talent, all of his storytelling ability into this episode. There isn't a single dull moment in this whole episode. You are riveted from when Dean rises his hand, raises his hand through the ground to when Castiel says, the Lord has work for you. It's so fantastic. We had an introduction to a whole new world of uh, characters being the angels. We have a great introduction of Castiel, as he's alluded to throughout the whole episode. As we see Sam and Dean reunite after Dean being dead for, the, for three months. We also see Dean punch a demon in the face. And it's such a that's one of the best bits i would say it's just the balls of that scene it's just so good overall lazarus rising is such a great way to bring people back after the despair that we all went through with season three does that kind of demitigate the ending of season three which i love so much sure maybe in the long run but that three month span of time between dean dying and dean coming back i had no idea what they were going to do I didn't know how they were going to proceed with this. Seeing Dean come back but not making it feel like a MacGuffin or kind of like a wasted aspect was the real challenge of this episode and it just does it marvelously. Every bit about this episode is great. Going back again to Misha Collins uh, being introduced as Castiel, this great character that just got completely shed on in the latter seasons. It's really cool to see him have such grandioseness, uh, like such grandiose to him, such power, such mystery, such intimidation. Um, it's a really cool alternative to the angels that we kind of, or we've always been kind of told about. It was cool to see angels as warriors. At the same time too, the illusion, the kind of what if, if there was even anything resembling heaven, angels or God, throughout the last three seasons was just so kind of like it's probably not going to happen that when it did it was done so well that you were fine with being completely honey dick for the last three seasons lazarus rising is just overall it's just a fantastic episode it's a fantastic season opener it's probably one of the best in the show's history if not the best in the show's history i've already started watching season five and that sympathy for the devil is okay but it's not as good as this one. So I'm I'm honestly gonna come out and say it. I really think that Lazarus Rising is the best season opener that the show ever did. The only other one I would say that's in slight contention is season two. And that's because I just I love season two's opener as well. But anyways, there you go. There you have it. Those are the what I believe to be the top five best episodes of Supernatural season four. You guys tell me what you think your top five episodes are in the comments below. Cause I'm really interested to see what you guys have to say, because I imagine this is a bit different. However, I almost guarantee y'all are going to have either Lazarus Rising or Lucifer Rising or hell, both of them in the same 
list for the top five. Give me your guys' list. I'd love to see what they have, what you guys have to say. Anyways, guys, that's it. This is officially the last video about season four, officially. There is still gonna be the one with me talking about Chuck that I plan to do as soon as possible. Admittedly, I've already started reviewing season five. I'm hoping to kind of catch up, like get a little bit ahead of myself because I've got a lot of work to do, obviously. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next week with Supernatural season five. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.